Welcome to this episode of Mentors at Your Benchside, the podcast giving you advice, tips and tools for getting the most out of your research. I'm Laura Grassi and today I'll be talking to you about ways to overcome problems amplifying GC-rich regions. Another blank gel after a failed PCR? Are you having problems amplifying GC-rich regions of DNA? No, it isn't you that's the problem and you're certainly not alone if you're having trouble. Problems amplifying GC-rich regions by PCR have been an irritant for scientists for decades. There are several options available if you are having problems, which either alone or in combination may help you deal with this problem. But first, let's look at why GC-rich sequences are more difficult to amplify. Problem 1. Thermal and structural stability. Firstly, what do we mean by GC-rich regions? When we say GC-rich, we mean approximately 60% or more of the bases are either cytosine or guanine. GC-rich DNA sequences are inherently more stable than sequences with a low GC content. For PCR, this means the higher the GC content, the higher the melting point of the DNA. The increased stability of GC-rich DNA sequences is, contrary to popular belief, not primarily because of the hydrogen bonds. Stabilisation is mainly due to stacking interactions called base stacking. There are some beautiful biochemistry and biophysics behind why this stacking occurs. Visit the original article to find out references for this. This is why Thermus thermophilus, an extremophile that needs to tolerate very high environmental temperatures, has a GC-rich genome. This is also why regions of our genome, assuming of course that you are human, that need to be transcribed very often, such as promoter regions of highly expressed genes, are AT-rich, like the Tata box. Problem 2. Formation of secondary structures. This point is very much tied to the first point. When GC-rich regions form secondary structures, particularly hairpin loops, they're very stable and so they stick around and accumulate. Furthermore, these secondary structures don't melt well at usual PCR denaturation temperatures. Additionally, primers used to amplify GC-rich regions tend to form self and cross dimers as well as stem loop or hairpin structures that can impede the progress of the DNA polymerase along the template molecule leading to truncated PCR products. GC-rich sequences at the three prime end of primers can also lead to mispriming. What a disaster. Poof, that's the sound of your confidence in your ability to do PCR deflating. But wait, we have several solutions for you if you have problems amplifying GC-rich regions in your PCR. Solution one, increasing your melting temperature. This is a very sensible and easy solution, in theory at least. The higher your melting temperature, the more likely those troublesome secondary structures formed by GC-rich regions are to separate. However, be wary as this can result in lower product yields. This is because your enzyme of choice, which is doing the amplification, can begin to denature more quickly at temperatures in excess of 92.5 degrees Celsius. Therefore, it is advisable only to use higher melting temperatures for the first few cycles and to definitely avoid going over 95 degrees C. It might take some playing around, but this solution is often a nice, easy starting point if you are having problems amplifying GC-rich regions. Solution 2. Adjusting your magnesium concentration. Non-specific amplification in general can be exacerbated and even caused by using excessive concentrations of magnesium in your PCR reaction. Therefore, it's a good idea to test the optimum concentration using gradient or titration PCR. In a nutshell, the well or tube on the absolute left should contain less than what you think will work, and the well or the tube on the absolute right should contain an excessive amount of magnesium. And then in between, there should be a gradient, so you can determine the lowest possible amount you can use to achieve your product. Solution 3. Using additives in your PCR reaction. Another way researchers can potentially improve problems in amplifying GC-rich regions is through the use of additives in their PCR reactions. These can include additives such as DMSO, glycerol and BSA. However, there are no hard and fast rules about these additives. Their effects can be highly variable depending on the specific target, cycling condition and the specific PCR enzyme and buffer being used for amplification. So you'll need to test these out. Solution 4. Changing your polymerase or buffer. This solution is likely not to be the cheapest way to address your new issues, but sometimes great science will require some fancy new products to be purchased. Some companies offer buffers and polymerases specifically designed to amplify GC-rich regions. 
One such example is the one tac GC buffer from NEB. This buffer can be further supplemented with a high GC enhancer. Other companies have optimised new polymerases to help amplify GC-rich regions. Thermo Fisher has developed AccuPrime GC-rich DNA polymerase, which originates from the Archaeobacterium pyloribus fumarius. This polymerase has increased processivity compared to TAC DNA polymerase. It remains active after 4 hours at 95 degrees C, allowing you to combine this with our very first tip of increasing your melting temperature. Solution 5. Changing your PCR method entirely. Researchers have also developed entirely new ways to perform PCR on GC-rich templates to increase its success. One such example is known as slowdown PCR, which requires the addition of a DGTP analogue to the PCR mixture. Slowdown PCR also uses a standardised cycling protocol with varying temperatures. Generally, ramp rates are lowered and the PCR is run for additional cycles compared to a more standard PCR programme. That's it for how to amplify GC-rich region. Check out the episode description for links to related articles and resources. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast to get more help and advice from mentors at your bench side.